Hello, I'm James Preston and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. In this edition, I'll be shining a light on superior people recruitment. Superior People Recruitment is a renowned leader in the Australian recruitment services industry. The agency has matched up thousands of candidates with ideal employers, utilizing its extensive clients and staff base present in every major city across Australia. To find out more about the business itself, I'm now joined by the founder and director, Graham Wynn. Graham, welcome to Cowkine. Good morning, how are you today? Very good, thank you, mate. It's great to have you here. Graham, first and foremost, take us through your business. What exactly is it that you do and how do you differ from other recruiting agencies? Sure. Well, basically, our, our purpose is to find staff for employers. So employers will come to us and our job is to go out there and find them. Um, we tend not to use the, the job boards as the main source. We will try and use our own network, database, headhunting, poaching. We've just found that much more effective than just sticking a job on a job board. Um, the job market is quite passive, so we have to really tap into people and, and really attack them that way. So it's more of a lengthy process, but that's probably one of the differences we have is we don't just rely on job boards to find people for, for employers. And how do you build that rapport with other companies and, and find those opportunities? Is that a bit of a challenge? It's always a challenge, but we've spent quite a bit of uh, money and effort on search engine for our website. So we do attract a lot of business from our own website. And we've also found successfully that for some strange reason, the people in certain industries will refer us to their competitors, which is surprising. <laughs> so if we find a good candidate for one company and they've got a, a company they know who are struggling to find staff, they'll refer us to them. So it's, it's interesting that employers will actually refer us to their competitors to find good people for them as well. You wouldn't expect that to happen, but it happens quite a lot there. Yes, yeah, so a word of mouth referral is the best recommendation you can get. And we get quite a lot of that. Now, that is quite strange. And I think another thing that's interesting at present is that it's a, a bit of a strange job market. We've heard a lot about the great resignation, for example, popping through. Uh, there's apparently quite low unemployment rates at, at this point in time. From your perspective, how is the job market situated at present? It's as challenging as I've ever seen it. I've run this business now for about 12 years and I've never experienced it this difficult to find candidates. It's a real shortage. So this great resignation, it just isn't happening in Australia at the moment. Um, if it was, we'd all have a pool of candidates we can tap into, but none of us do have. And I'm getting so many employers coming to me now more than we used to, simply saying, we just can't find people. So you're going to have to help us do it. So there clearly isn't a great resignation in Australia. Other countries, yes, but we're, we're a very different market over here. And just a slight information, though, I think the problem we have over here is that we're the same size as, as America. We've only got 20 million people compared to 360 million. And if you take the UK, for instance, that fits inside of Victoria and they've got 65 million people. Mm. So logistically, it's much easier for those people to move from one job to another job to another job. Whereas Australia, you're really just centralised in the major cities. That's where the most people are. So we don't have that luxury of being able to just go where we want to for work. We are limited in choice. So I think that means we don't have the same movement of people as other countries do. Well, with that in mind, have you noticed that there's been, obviously with the past two years, a lot of people been working remotely. We're starting to get out of the pandemic phase into the endemic phase. Is it fair to say that when you're speaking with some of these companies, are they now more open to the concept of remote working in an ongoing format, allowing people to, to do those kind of things that they might be able to do, for example, in the UK, but can't do here? Probably not as many companies as people would like to think there is. The, the big major corporations have got the finances, the, the infrastructure, they can do that. But a lot of the small to medium businesses, they just don't have the infrastructure in place and they need people in the office on a full-time basis. So that's part of the challenge we're having now that a lot of people were working from home during the pandemic. Mm. And now come here saying, we want you back in the office now. And there's a bit of a sort of a, we don't want to go in the office, but employers say, well, you need to come back to the office. So we're finding that quite a bit of a struggle at the moment that employers are now saying to people, we want you back in the office. And there's definitely a bit of a fight against that from the people already employed or those looking for work saying, we like this work from home, we like the hybrid role, but it's just not always practical. So yeah, we're seeing a bit of an issue with that at the moment. So I know you've spoken a little bit about how you work directly with the companies itself as opposed to job boards, but what process do you go through in order to match the most suitable candidates to the right roles? Look, I think, I think the real thing that we try and focus on is that it's not always the best experience, the best qualified. We're trying to find a fit. 
So what's important is the person stays there for a long period of time. We offer quite lengthy guarantee periods compared to our competitors. So we need to find the right fit. And I think that's what we really focus on more than just ticking boxes on skills or qualifications. We look for the fit. So we need to learn as much about the business as possible. Pre-pandemic, we would always go to an actual employer, find out where is this person actually sitting in the business? Who's around them? What's around them? What's the environment like? So we can get the right feel of the culture of the employer mm. to make sure we find the right fit for them. We have to, it's a bit more difficult to do that. We still try to do it as much as we can because that fit is just as important as the right skill or qualification. So that's probably where we focus a little bit differently again. And probably one of the points of difference is that a lot of our competitors use these automated systems. So if people apply for a job, jumps into a database, and then the data spits out the resume at the other end, we don't. We look at every single resume that comes in, purely because you may have applied for one job which you might be suited to, but we may have another job. And if you rely on this automation, you won't always get that. Mm. So we actually look at every single resume that comes in and reads it basically, yeah. Sounds very in-depth. Now, I think another thing that is quite prevalent, at least in the forefront of most people's minds when they think of recruitment agencies is that we tend to associate them with corporate roles, but Throughout the duration of the pandemic, it was travel and hospitality industries that were particularly hard hit. Have you done much work within those industries or the people that were affected by their closures? And if, if you did, what were the solutions that you provided? Yeah, certainly transport, logistics, warehousing, that was a real boom during the pandemic because obviously it been done online. So we've done a lot of work with transport companies in the past from logistics staff, warehouse staff, drivers. So we've certainly done extensive work with those companies. And a lot of customer service based roles where people could work from home, the telephone calls from home, we did a lot of work as well. So we've certainly been fortunate being a generalist that during the pandemic, we had enough different types of businesses we worked with that we could survive and carry on. A lot of those people who were real specialized in one particular area like real estate or anything else, they fell over because they had no other option. So we were fortunate that we are a generalist, so we were able to work with all those industries that were still surviving through the pandemic. So that was a real benefit for us now. Australia also recently opened its international borders. How do you think that will impact your candidate pool? I mean, you're talking about we're not experiencing a great resignation at the moment. Will we now see an influx of potential people to start employing for these businesses that are looking for them? We're very, very hopeful that the open international borders will be a real godsend for us because uh, a lot of the, the skilled works, we don't have a large skilled workforce in Australia. So a lot of those jobs were taken by overseas people on skilled visas. Mm. We haven't got those right now. And we don't have, as I say, the, the apprentices coming through to take those jobs. It's been a real problem now trying to find those skilled people. Bringing the overseas people in will do two things. One will help us fill vacancies, but it also mean that the bargaining power that some of those people looking for work have got, they think they have with, so there's a shortage, I can ask more money now, that will remove because mm. the people with the skills can come in and do the job. So the employers won't need to pay such a high premium to get people in now. So once the borders open fully, that will certainly stop the inflation in some of the job vacancies we're seeing salary-wise at the moment and help us fill more vacancies as well, yeah. Now, as someone who's previously lived in Goulburn on the south coast and also in Port Macquarie, this is something that's quite interesting to me is trying to fill those regional gaps in terms of uh, workforces there. There is often quite a bit of a job shortage, but there is also, of course, the need for people to go and work in those areas and oftentimes they're actually calling out for it. So we know there's a specific set of challenges when it comes to, to regional areas. How is your company placed in terms of meeting those challenges? Is, is do you change things up a little bit differently in terms of your approach to regional work? A little bit, yes. Um, we actually opened up an office in regional Victoria about 12 months ago because we saw that with the main cities closing down, regional was still going. So mm. we opened up an office to try and work in those areas. And that's been quite quite fruitful for us, that. It, it's a very different market, though. It's a much more relaxed market. And we try and have actually tried to poach people from the major cities now to work in regional areas mm. by selling the benefits of the relaxed lifestyle, much more easy going, open countryside. So we're really selling the benefits, not just of the workplace, but of regionals, because it's they're, they're great places to be and live. Um, if you like countryside, open air and fresh air, regional is brilliant. So we're really trying to sell the benefits of being in regional, not just the benefit of the job or the company they're working for. And that's had a benefit definitely by trying to sell that to the job seekers as well. And a lot of them are ready to relocate because 
Mm. CBD has had the lockdowns. Regional hasn't had the same. So I think there's a real shift. If people can get away from the city, they will. Yeah, we've definitely seen that. When you look at real estate listings, it's been a bunch of tree and sea changes over the past two years, that's for sure. Mm, absolutely. Now, yeah. uh, in terms of superior I did, people- I did the same myself. <laughs> well, uh, where are you based at the moment, Graham? At the moment, I'm based in Shepparton. Oh, beautiful, yeah. Regional Victoria. Part of Victoria. Uh, yep, so um, I have the office in Melbourne CBD. I've got offices in other states, but the head office is Melbourne. I basically left that for people to run down there, open up an office in, in regional Victoria. Loved it up here, so I'm staying here for a while. No, wonderful. The That's exactly the what we like to see. CBD, they run themselves fine with people down in those offices. So it's just enabled me to build it up in regional Victoria. And, and yeah, I love the lifestyle. And we still have the lovely backdrop that we can put up there regardless. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Absolutely where you are. right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Graham, what would you say would be the company's long term goals moving forward? Long term, we'll certainly continue to grow as we are. And at this stage, what we're looking at over the last three or four months is certainly greater than pre pandemic. So we're definitely on the right track. Long term, we'd be looking to, if we could go international, I think the UK is a market for us to tap into. So I'm certainly looking at that option down the track. Definitely once all this is dealt with and we're back to fully normal, I'll certainly look at an office in, in, in the UK, definitely, that's for sure. Uh, America's a much harder market to get into, but the UK is much easier to start and operate a business over there. So that certainly is a growth we're looking at. One, one thing we did differently to most organisations is when the pandemic hit, we restructured like a real estate. I allowed my staff to work from home, got rid of the fancy offices, and we therefore made a lot of cost savings on how we ran the business. So what I did was actually pass that cost saving on to our clients. So we actually reduced our fees, but we're still making the same level of profit, if you like. And not many companies do that, I realised. But I thought ethically it was the right thing to do. I'm making savings, I should pass those savings on. And that's been a real tick for us that the the response that's received of us appreciating how we're doing this for people, it's been really good for us to do that. So we're actually getting far greater work now than we did before that, even with reduced fee structure. That's terrific. I, th I think you guys have certainly hit the nail on the head. You've adapted as times have changed and they've certainly changed a lot in the last two years and it looks like you've got things well placed for the future as well. Graham, just before I let you go, social media, uh, websites, where can we find you? Uh, superiorpeople.com.au is our website and on there you'll find all the links to our LinkedIn pages etc but yeah the website itself is the main source which is superiorpeople.com.au Wonderful well, Graham thank you so much for your time today it's been great to chat Appreciate that thank you so much well, That's Graham Wynn the founder and director of Superior People Recruitment and if you missed any part of that chat the full interview will be available on our YouTube channel Kalkai Media so make sure to subscribe That's all for now until next time Make sure that you stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkai.